Hello there, my name is David Hillier and I'm going to give a short video on market efficiency and in particular I will be speaking about weak form market efficiency, semi-strong form market efficiency and strong form market efficiency. So let's start off by thinking about what is meant by these three types of market efficiency. In a previous video, I talked about efficient markets and, and what is required for you to achieve efficiency. In this video, we're going to be talking about different types of efficiency. And we'll start off with the easiest type of market efficiency to achieve, and that is weak form. Weak form market efficient, uh, efficiency means that the price that you see today for an asset incorporates the information in all past prices. So if I was to say that, for example, and let, let's talk about the currency markets. So the exchange rate that we get today, well, the exchange rate we get today incorporates all the information of past exchange rates, rates on today's exchange rate. The same goes for an equity or a bond. If the price today incorporates all previous information relating to prices, then we say that the market is weak form efficient. And that means that you can't take advantage of knowing past price information. So if you know past price information, you know maybe patterns in prices, um, or you know some maybe cyclicity in prices. Well, if you know about that, if the market is weak form efficient, you can't take advantage of it. Now, the converse applies then. So if the market is not weak form efficient, then you can earn excess returns or continually earn profits from your trading uh, by using the information that you've got about past prices. And you see that there are a lot of people that believe that in the markets that you can earn continually, on average, uh, excess returns or profits from using past price information. That's technical analysis, looking at patterns and prices. If you can make money from uh, using patterns and prices, then it tells you that that information isn't incorporated into the price, and so therefore the market is not weak form efficient. Now it's the easiest type of efficiency and when we think about weak form efficiency we, we're only talking about past prices. But what if we extend it and we say that the price today incorporates not just information and past prices but also all other publicly available information. Now that would be uh, accounting statements, it could be news releases, it could be information that has been discussed in uh, the media. All of that is publicly available. And semi-strong form market efficiency says that, that prices incorporate all of that. Anything that's public is already incorporated into the price. And so if, for example, uh, there is a very good earnings announcement, that is something that is a surprise and at half a you read the newspaper and you say, okay, the, a company like Apple had an a, above average earnings that you, no one expected that. Then by the time that you go and trade, because it happened the day before, the prices have already reacted to it. And so you can't take advantage, you can't earn continual profits by using uh, publicly available information. So weak form says that prices incorporate all publicly available information, including past prices, and so therefore weak form subsumes, the or is subsumed by, or is part of semi-strong form market efficiency. Now the third type of market efficiency, which is the strongest, is, funnily enough, known as strong form market efficiency. And that form of market efficiency says that prices incorporate all information, whether it's public or it's private. So it doesn't matter if you know something about a company. You can't make profits on it. You can't do it all the time. 
you know, people will be able to make profits now and again, but the efficiency, the types of efficiency we talk about here is, is doing it on average, basically having a track record of um, making profits from information. So strong form says that you can't effectively create or generate excess returns, or that is you can't continually generate profits from using any type of efficiency. And we're going to talk about uh, empirical tests of the different types of efficiency in the next video. In this video, we're just focusing on the definition. But let's just look at a little bit of uh, just insight into what we mean by the different types of market efficiency. So we're going to start off with just the weak form. And, and I think that this is one that um, a lot of people believe actually happens, uh, that we get cyclicity in prices, or not even cyclicity, but patterns in prices. And there's a whole industry that has grown around what we call technical analysis. And technical analysis is um, a study of patterns in prices. So let's just look at this case. Let's see, say that we saw a situation as we see on the screen here. So you have prices go up, but then they go back down, and then they go up, and then they go down, and then they go up, and then they go down, and that's predictable. So it means that if we see prices going up and they start to plateau, we can have a good idea that the prices are going to fall. So we would sell at that point, or maybe go short or short the asset at that point. And then we see prices falling, we then see that it starts to plateau again. So at that point, we buy. And we buy, we sell, we buy, we sell. And that difference between the buying and selling prices will give us profits. And because there's a lot of predictability in there, then on average, we are going to earn a, a positive uh, return from our investment. And I use the term excess return because I want us to be really careful about that. When you invest in any investment, you take on risk. And that risk, you need to be compensated for that risk. And the way you get compensated for that risk is through a return that you expect on that investment. But here we're talking about an excess return. So it's profits over and above what you expect to get from your investment. So that's, that's important. And I'll explore that in more detail in a future video. Now, there are some misconceptions about market efficiency. I'm going to just talk about three of those. And the first one is the what we call the dart-throwing uh, misconception. And here, there is a, a statement that you sometimes see that says, well, if you can't earn, on average, excess returns, then you can choose any investment. It doesn't really matter. Just choose anyone because you're going to just perform as well as as spending all this time uh, doing your analysis and picking uh, companies for your investment portfolio. But that's wrong because when if you just randomly select securities, you're not controlling for risk and you're not maximizing the effect of diversification. So you're, although you are investing in a random way and you might think, well, the, the excess returns, if, if, if you can't earn excess returns on average, then uh, it's just as good to do that. Well, no, because remember what I said, if you take on risk, you, you expect a return on your investment as compensation for that risk. So you're going to get that level of risk. What we're talking about here is that there is the above average returns over and above what you expect. And we call that excess returns. And also diversification. If you choose randomly, you might choose companies all from the same industry. And uh, there's very little opportunity for diversification in most cases then. The next thing is that if we say, well, you, you can't earn excess returns because you can't predict prices. And that's what we said in the previous slide, that people think there are patterns in prices. And market efficiency says, well, you, there are no patterns and prices. If, the, mar if a, the market is weak form efficient, there are no patterns. And then people might say, well, if there are no patterns, you can't predict prices, then that's weird because 
that would tell you that the market is inefficient. If you if you, you know if you're not, if prices are just random, how can prices be random if the market is efficient? And what we'd say there is, well, okay, let's let's just take the case of semi-strong form efficiency. Semi-strong form efficiency says that prices incorporate all past available publicly available information, including past prices. So all of that publicly available information that's available is already incorporated into a price. But we can't predict what's going to happen in the future. We don't know. We can't, we're can't. we not uh, fortune tellers. So news will come out. And that news, by definition, is something that we don't know. It's new. And the, if a market is really efficient, any news items that come in, now we can't predict the news, so it's going to arrive randomly, Prices will respond to that information, and so then prices will move. So if news is randomly arriving in the markets, then prices will respond to that random news, and so therefore prices will be random, or price movements will be random. And that randomness means that prices cannot be predictable. There are no patterns. And then the last one is, is one where people say, well, look, you get uh, a company, any company, there's only going to be a subset of investors that are trading the equity of that company. And given it's only a subset, the market can't be efficient because you're only seeing a small number or a small group of investors trading. But what we would say is that it, you don't need everyone to trade for a market to be efficient because all it takes is a small group of individuals to exploit mispricing. That if, if a, a stock is overpriced, then sell. If a stock is underpriced, then buy. And as long as there is enough capital to be able to exploit those undervaluation and overvaluations, then you could argue that uh, you don't need everyone to trade. You only need a subset. So those are three common misconceptions. That there is a lot of criticism around about market efficiency, especially after the global financial crisis. And in future videos, I'll be talking about that and I'll be talking about behavioural finance as well, which basically says that uh, markets are not efficient. So thank you very much. Uh, thanks for listening and uh, I'll talk to you again.